we're back talking about electricity and energy. Today we're going to talk about what electricity needs to work. Electricity first needs a closed circuit. It has to be a complete loop. So if we take this energy stick and I hold one side, I don't have any energy at all. Nothing's happening. But if I touch the other side and complete the circuit, close the circuit, I have lights, I have sound, I have all kinds of things happening because I've completed the circuit. So remember, electricity needs a closed circuit. It also needs a power source. In this stick, that power source is a battery right there. So it needs a power source and then a complete circuit. So power sources could be batteries, like our flip camera or like that machine takes. Or it could just be the outlet power that when you plug into the wall. But it needs a power source that generates the flow of electrons. Remember, electricity is when we're forcing electrons to move in a certain way. Requiring a closed circuit. If a circuit is open and not complete, not a complete circle, then it will not have electricity flowing to whatever it's trying to power. The electrons get here and it's just too big of a jump. They cannot make that jump. They can't go to the other side. No matter how small that jump can, is, if it doesn't complete the circuit, if it doesn't connect, it will not move on forward. If it's a closed circuit, then it's going to start and it's going to go all the way around. It doesn't have any problems finishing that track. There's not an incomplete road there. There's not a cliff they're trying to jump over. It's nice and easy to go around. So a circuit is a closed path that electricity can flow through. Some misconceptions about electricity are that wires that carry electricity are like hollow water hoses. When you have a water hose, there's a hole in the middle. If there's not water going on, you can put your finger in it. Probably shouldn't put our finger in it because we might get stuck and that'd be bad. But you could. It's empty on the inside. It's hollow. Wires aren't hollow in the middle. They are a complete, smooth piece of metal. There's no air. There's no space inside of that. The electrons go straight on that. That flow of energy goes straight inside that and around it. Current is the movement of an electrical charge through a material, so no empty space, but through the actual material, usually metals. Series circuit. So this is a circuit when you, when you don't want to have to untie everything to put it back together, you put a switch in. We have one battery, sorry, we have one line from the battery going to the switch and the, then going on to the light and going up to the battery again. Notice the red and black, it gets important. If we open the switch, we have no light coming from the light bulb because we cut off those electrons from reaching the light bulb. They're stuck here, they can't go any further. Now, you might say, well that's great, but I might want to have two lamps, right? So, you add another light bulb in, okay? Same idea, battery, one wire going to the switch, going to both of the lights. Same red wire going to both ones. And then your black line coming out. The other side, positive, negative. Both of these light bulbs are going to be half as bright as these are. Why? Because you're sharing the energy. You don't have a red and a black going to each one. You just have one red going to both of them, one black coming from both of them. So if we add a second light, each light would only have half the light. This is a series circuit. Sometimes they call it a serial circuit. Now the opposite of a series circuit is a parallel circuit. Again, it's still all or none. If this light goes out, then this light goes out. Sometimes your Christmas lights are kind of like that, or any string of lights you have. All of a sudden the whole strand doesn't work because one bulb's broken or one wire's kind of twisted. Dad always hated those. So it goes again, we have the red wire coming out, going into each of these. But now look, instead of there just being one wire going back, we have the same wire going to each of them. So each light has a red wire and a black wire. A red wire and a black wire. The red and black are parallel. Just like we talk in math, they'll never touch. They're not on the same, they're parallel. So this is all or none, but what's great about this compared to the serial circuit is they don't lose power just because we put another one on. They both retain their original brightness. 
Now that's all great, but again, we don't want to have to go down to the garage and untie wires every time we turn on a light switch, right? So you can do a parallel with a switch. Take your red lead, hook it up to your switch, down to one light, down to the other. Again, they're parallel. Each one has a red lead, each one has a black lead. Still the same brightness on each when the circuit is closed. But now you have a switch to turn it on and off. They're both fully lit, but again, if you want this light off, you have to turn the other light off, which can sometimes be annoying. So the way to solve that problem is with a series parallel circuit. Now we need one source, and we're going to have two complete closed circuits. We have our red leads again. It goes to one switch and then the other. This then comes down to one light bulb. This one then comes down to one light bulb. Each light bulb is getting a red and a black, a positive and a negative. Negative and a positive. They get both, so they still have the same brightness. They're not losing that. But now I can turn this light off and leave that one on. Or I can turn this one on and leave this one on. Or I can have them both on and turn them both off. So that is the series parallel circuit. The next time that we talk about electricity, we're going to talk about conductors and insulators. So tune back in for more about electricity.